afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. It is Saturday, February 10th, and you know what that means. It is time for the High Risk Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, not getting slapped in the face, Jeremy Pierce. Welcome, 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 one at all. You know you can check me out on the socials, Charismatic Creations on Facebook and YouTube, Charismatic underscore Creations 52 on Instagram, and of course, the two... 15 on Twitter and of course today's show the people versus the people's champ I like that title I really do I like that title uh we're gonna talk about the whole Wrestlemania decision with the rock and Cody and Roman and everything that just happened um I wanted to wait a week to do this I didn't want to react from last Friday when the rock showed up i wanted to give it a week and see how things play out especially with the press conference so for now you know what's next so just go on and hit my music since we are well on our way to the road well on the road to wrestlemania forgive that uh, zordon is calling me we are going to look at the five people who should challenge Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. And number five, well, we are going with Cody Rhodes. Even though we know uh, the decision now, Cody is still fit to face Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight Championship. We just don't know what truly is going to happen until we get to WrestleMania. And here's the thing. We don't need this match because, you know, Cody has defeated Seth three straight times. And the third time was with one arm in a hell in a cell match. Number four, Randy Orton. He has qualified for the Elimination Chamber. And uh, these two have some history together. And the match will be nothing short of, well, really good. They have fought each other at WrestleMania. Um, I believe the last 24 to WrestleMania was the night Seth cashed in. Randy Orton won the match earlier in the evening, hitting a beautiful RKO counter from Seth's curb stomp. But Randy Orton, all he cares about is goal right now. Number three, L.A. Knight. Yeah. Yeah, L.A. Knight uh, is really, really fit for this role. Um, I could definitely see him getting a major pop at WrestleMania and Seth being the uh, ring technician that he is can help elevate LA Knight. LA Knight's not going to be known for his in-ring work, but going against Seth, that would definitely, definitely elevate that match just a little bit more. Number two, Logan Paul. I can't stand this dude. He's a piece of shit. He's not a good person, but he's really good at this pro wrestling thing. Um, Logan Paul just has it and he and Seth have history and Logan could possibly get his W back from Seth Rollins. Would WWE be as crazy as to put the world championship on Logan Paul? Probably. Probably. And number one, Drew McIntyre dubbed C, uh, DM Hunk. Drew McIntyre has been on an absolute tear right now he is putting in some of the best work of his career there are no lies into what he is saying none drew mcintyre would be perfect and he would essentially get his second uh wrestlemania major wrestlemania victory uh because he remember he defeated brock at wrestlemania during the pandemic but he lost to bobby lashley at WrestleMania, I think a year later. So Drew defeating Seth would just work. But those are the five men who should face Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. The spotlight is bright. It is back on and it is shining on one EO Sky. Now y'all know me and my affinity for EO. I think she's the best women's wrestler on the planet. And there are very few that compare to her that can ride with her when it comes to entering ability. There's Kyrie, there's Mayu, there's Asuka, there's 
Bailey, Mercedes, um, Mercedes Monet, um, Diana Peraza, and a f- you know a few more others. Io Sky is that good, and she is going into WrestleMania as the WWE Women's Champion. Now, albeit her reign has been lackluster, but that's not her fault. I don't think she's truly being utilized to the best of her abilities. But we know when she is given the time, when she is given that rope to just go in the ring, there's no one better. This is a major, major moment for EO. She has the backing of two of her best and closest friends in Asuka and Kyrie saying we have, they're essentially damage control now. Um, and then you have the broken down in the tag teams. You have Asuka and Kyrie as the Kabuki Warriors. Then you have uh, EO and Kyrie as the Sky Pirates. So this is really, really good. I just, I just need everybody to recognize the kind of talent that EO is. Give her a few more matches and let her show, like, hey. Yo, we're assuming Bailey's going to win because it's Bailey. We know what Bailey's capable of, but we really haven't truly seen what EO has really been able to do since you know her really good reign in NXT. EO Sky is a talent unlike any other, and I just want her to be able to shine brightly going forward to WrestleMania. We'll be right back. People versus the people's champ. Last week's show was on how to fix the road to WrestleMania, and that comes into play once again. If you've been living under a rock, you might be surprised to know that The Rock has a match possibly at WrestleMania. And that he's coming for his cousin, the tribal chief. Huh. So what 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 has been going down this past week or so? Goes back to let's say the Royal Rumble. So we we have the Royal Rumble. Last year, Cody Rose won the Royal Rumble, challenged Roman Reigns lost Roman Reigns so now it was about finishing his story and for the longest time we thought the story was defeating Roman Reigns for the undisputed championship at Wrestlemania winning the WWE championship at Wrestlemania the championship that was taken away from his father Cody loses gets injured comes back has a couple feuds we're back to the Royal Rumble It comes down to the final two people, Cody Rhodes, CM Punk. Now, at that moment, if CM Punk had won, wouldn't have shocked me. It would have just said, okay, Punk wins, challenges uh, Seth. Cody can figure out another path to face Roman. I'm all for that. Cody wins the Royal Rumble. Okay. Now, WWE, as we looked at in the road to WrestleMania, how to fix the road to WrestleMania last week, they have this dumb idea that whenever the winner of the Royal Rumble wins, within a week, two weeks, they've got to say who they're facing at WrestleMania. So essentially, you're telling me that the champions are going to hold their belts until Wrestlemania even though there's another event between the Royal Rumble and Wrestlemania and the championship has changed hands between the Royal Rumble and Wrestlemania prime example Eddie Guerrero defeating um, Brock Lesnar for the undisputed championship Uh, 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 Bray Wyatt winning the Olympic Chamber becoming the WWE champion because if you dictate who's going to win if you're going to dictate who's going to be challenged WrestleMania you're telling me everything that I need to know 
So we we have the Rumble and Cody wins the Royal Rumble, lastly eliminating CM Punk. I'm like, okay. And at the end of the show, uh, both the world champions were in the skyboxes and Cody was clearly pointing to Roman and Roman was pissed. That's great. We then find out the next night on Raw and even earlier in the day that CM Punk is injured. He has a torn, I think, tricep, so he's out for at least four months. Well, he can't challenge Seth Rollins for the World Championship, and I was perfectly fine with CM Punk versus Seth Rollins, right? So now you've got to pivot. You have to find a new challenger for Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. And that's okay. You have plenty of capable people to challenge Seth Rollins for the World Championship at WrestleMania. But now there's something else. There's something else in the background that's clouding things what is that you ask the lawsuit earlier in the month of January lawsuit came out former WWE employee Janelle Grant was suing Vince McMahon for essentially sex trafficking and ruining her career right we've talked about this This was during the same week that The Rock was named to the board of directors for TKO. So you have Janelle Grant suing Vince. Vince has been excommunicated from the WWE, centrally giving Triple H all of the power, right? So that lawsuit really messed up because they also had announced the, the cover athletes for 2K24 Rhea uh, Bianca and Cody Rhodes and it's all about telling your story finishing your story so this lawsuit is major major news because the, the text that came out the things that came out aren't good and Vince is gone John Laurinaitis is uh, um, gone Bruce Pritchard should be gone. Oh, and Brock Lesnar is gone. So, between the injury and the lawsuit, WrestleMania plans were changed because we were definitely going to get Gunther versus Brock Lesnar. Hoss fight, big meaty men slapping man meat. And then we get the decision. Cody arrives at SmackDown. Roman comes out into the show and he runs down Seth Rollins. Runs him down. Runs down his reign. Runs down his championship. Runs down his challengers. And he's not wrong at all. Everything he said was true all of Seth's challengers are people Roman has already defeated and yes Roman has the most I'm not going to say boring matches but the the same outcome Roman gets behind the eight ball someone from from his family intervenes right and yes Seth is a workhorse but do workhorses limp and do you want Seth Rollins money or do you want tribal chief money Roman wasn't wrong with what he said and earlier that week on Raw Seth made a plea to Cody we know this song and dance with Roman we know how the story is going to go we know how it's going to end fight me I need to prove that I can beat you 
And Seth made some really, really good points. So, Cody comes out, confronts Roman, tells Roman that, yo, Seth made a lot of good points. Made a lot, a lot of good points. And the thing is, the championship that Roman holds is still the championship of Bruno San Martino and Hulk Hogan and Stone Cold and Bret Hart and Eddie Guerrero. It's the same championship that was taken from his father. And the Cody gives us a very, very peculiar line. Has finishing the story been about just taking the championship from Roman or taking everything from Roman? And that gives me cause for pause because, no, the, 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 the story is taking the championship from Roman. And... Cody tells Roman that he is going to take everything from him. But it's not going to be at WrestleMania. So now I'm confused. Right? And Cody tells Seth, he's Cody tells Roman he's been talking to people and that he's taking counsel with some people. And there was one man who took who he took great counsel with. And that man knows Roman Reigns quite well and out comes the rock essentially Cody seeded his guaranteed Wrestlemania world championship match to the rock rock hug Cody and you can see a look of sadness on Cody's face Rock and Roman have the stare down. Cody walks to the back. Let's pause right here before we get to the back half of, of this story. Rock versus Roman was always going to happen. It was supposed to happen last year. Now, Roman's story was always going to end one of few ways. Jay, Solo, The Rock, or Cody. Someone was taking this championship from him. Someone was ending the tribal chief. If you can make the biggest money match for WrestleMania, what are they? Look at the whole roster. What are they? Becky versus Rhea. Rhea versus Bianca. Bailey versus Becky. Roman versus Cody. Roman versus The Rock. Now you take those five matches, which is the biggest one? As much as I think Becky Rhea is the money match, it's The Rock versus Roman Reigns. It was always the right decision. So how did we get here? How did we get to this spot? Well, we have to go back to the injury and the lawsuit. So this lawsuit made headlines, global headlines. So what is what is the number one tactic you can use in media? to divert interest you just come up with a bigger story so what's a bigger story quote unquote 
than Vince McMahon's ouster. The Rock versus Roman Reigns. And now we're here talking about The Rock versus Roman Reigns and not this really, really major lawsuit. So, the lawsuit dictated, well, we need something bigger. Rock versus Roman. We have the injury. Well, we could just do Cody versus Seth. Doesn't make sense. So because of two, these two things, we got this. Let's move on to the backlash, not the pay-per-view. So that night, that weekend, all hell broke loose. Roman was chilling. And they announced the WrestleMania kickoff press conference. And over the weekend, it was just, we want Cody, we want Cody, we want Cody. This doesn't make sense, right? And the backlash was major. Remember earlier when I said The Rock was on that TKO board? Yeah, he pushed for this. And I get it. Rock Roman, big money match. So if you knew beforehand, and Triple H knew as well, that you were going to go forward with The Rock versus Roman Reigns, why have Cody Rhodes win... The Royal Rumble. Why? You could have just had The Rock come out at number 30 and win the Royal Rumble. It's that simple. It is very much that simple. And the backlash was intense so nobody thought that this was happening the rock pushed for this the locker room they were just unsure they were sh they, they 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 were in shock so this was all but an inevitability of The Rock facing Roman Reigns. Period. Done. End of story. We get to we get to Monday Night Raw. And we've had a weekend to marinate on all of this, right? We opened up the show with Seth. And Seth Wasn't expecting the Rocky Sucks chance. When, 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 when was the last time you really heard Rocky Sucks? And those, those meant something. Rocky Sucks. Y'all remember, y'all remember Die Rocky Die? The Fuhrer got so much to the point, we're going back to Seth, that WWE had to edit out Cody's sad reaction from when he hugged the Rock. And we have essentially been pushed into another similar situation, but we'll get there. We, we, we will get there. Seth calls out Cody and says, look, face me. Rock's getting booed at Vintage Day. Fans are chanting, Rocky sucks. What is there to do? And Drew McIntyre comes out. He's like, listen, I, 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 I set this up for you all perfectly. And your hair is screwing it up. So we never got an answer from Cody. We then get to the 
press conference. <sighs> this press conference. <sighs> the Rock showed his family tree. The Annoy family tree is quite large. And Roman said that Cody screwed up, so now I'm going to make the decision. And Roman says, I'm going to face The Rock at WrestleMania because I'm the tribal chief. I'm like, cool. But Cody showed up to the press conference, and I don't think Cody was supposed to be there. Cody says, no, 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 no. I won the Royal Rumble. I'm facing Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, not you, Rock. And then Cody points out the Noy family tree, points out the grandfather, High Chief. And he says, if your grandfather saw you and witnessed this, he'd be ashamed of you. And that cuts deep when it comes to the Noy's. But then The Rock stepped in and says, when you talk about his grandfather, when you talk about his bloodline, you're talking about mines as well. And he won't be disrespected. Then he slapped Cody. Bro. Then that leads me to the pivot. When things were all said and done, Rock tells Triple H, you better fix this or he's going to do it. And we have this image of The Rock, Roman, and Paul Heyman walking out. So what is the pivot? Triple H comes out on SmackDown and says, listen, some people don't know their role and it doesn't matter what they think. But the main event of WrestleMania will be Cody Rhodes versus Roman Reigns for the Undisputed Championship. Okay, okay, but now we're falling into something that happened not too long ago. Do you guys remember when a certain uh, legendary superstar came back and won the Royal Rumble while another superstar was at a fever pitch in momentum and fan popularity? And the dude, we had to pivot and move forward with the triple threat match. You know what I'm talking about? Batista returning to win the Royal Rumble and to challenge Randy Orton. And fans did not want that. Who did they want? That would be one Daniel Bryan. And now we are in the same position. We are in the same role again. The Rock is Batista. Roman is Randy Orton. Cody Rhodes is Daniel Bryan. We are going to get this triple threat match. And we still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nearly eight weeks left to tell this story, to move some pieces around. Because Seth needs a challenger, and they're deciding that now. But seeing as how Triple H didn't fix it, well, Roman Reigns and The Rock will be on SmackDown next week. What side does The Rock lean into? How does he lean into things? Does he use his uh, power as the TKO, TKO board member? How will this play out? Cody's uh, popularity is not dying down any time soon and the 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 kickoff press conference was a was a major win because once again we have shifted the focus away from Vince McMahon so now because of the rumble the injury the lawsuit the decision the press conference and the pivot WWE has pulled me back into the story. 
because now I'm here. They're, they're using this chaos to tell a, a really good story. Does the Rock use his power? Does the Rock turn on Roman? What does Cody do? There are so many moving parts here, and you just got to sit back, watch, and enjoy the ride. I'm excited. I am curious. I am loving all of this. But that is our show, ladies and gentlemen. Let me know what you think. The people versus the people's champ. They have spoken. We want Cody. This is going to be good. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching next week. I didn't get a lot of stuff done this week. So we got Flashback Friday. We've got the Ballad of Bailey. We've got the wrestling recap every Sunday. And we've got, you know, our Reddit content. We're going to get all this done don't forget to check out the socials charismatic creations on facebook and youtube charismatic underscore creations 52 on instagram and of course that 215 on twitter i'm gonna figure out this website thing and as always bailey isla dawn willow nightingale chris statlander anna J, and gg dolan holla at your boy peace